Aquinas, Mexico. Doc's trip to Mexico in 1956 says a lot about Doc. Because Doc Wilde has never taken the easy or the comfortable road. He's always been adventurous, a risk taker. And he's hunted and fished all his life. He's travelled all across the United States. And almost everything Doc Wilde does, he does well at. He does well, not so much because he's smarter than the average or more gifted. He succeeds because Doc has always been determined. Persistent, determined and a risk taker. Like the time Doc, Lyle Brooks and Warren Merrill went to Juanes, Mexico. Well, we just went down there to uh, go spearfishing, really, that's what it was all about. That trip, Wymus in those days, and it shows in the video, the main street had, you know, maybe half a dozen buildings on each side, and that was it. Little storefront, a dirt road, and that was it. That's where we went. But we went down there to test out our our home-built aqua lungs uh, that we had made. We had one of our group who was very smart and knew how to do it. First thing we did is we went to the junkyard and got a surplus oxygen tank. And you have to have these purged because they have materials in them that will kill your lungs if you inhale it. So you get it purged and then you put on a J valve here at the top that takes it from the 2200 pounds you put in the tank on your back, breaks it down to 110 pounds, and then we had, if you'll believe this, vacuum cleaner hose that came around to the face plate in front. The face plate was composed of a US Army Air Corps surplus oxygen mask that took it down to six pound pressure, which is your breathing pressure. And uh, they were neat, they really worked. I used mine for years. We had no safety built into the lungs at all. You must exhale all the way up because there are no nerves in your lungs and the lungs cannot feel any, there's no sense of anything. So what happens if you do not exhale on the way up, that your lungs blow up like a balloon and it breaks all the blood vessels in your lungs and you die. Doc caught the fishing bug a little closer to home at San Juan Creek along the Ortega Highway in the Cleveland National Forest. It was here too that Doc developed his lifelong love of the outdoors. San Juan Creek is not Doc Wilde's favourite place. That honour belongs to Oak Creek in Sedona. But San Juan Creek holds many memories for Doc. Memories from the time he first visited the area in his dad's Model T Ford right through to the time he gave Eleanor his fraternity pin. Here we are on San Juan Creek where I spent many, many moons. We got pictures of me and this rock that I'm standing on now 75 years ago. And that little patch of sand that's off to the right of the camera right here has been there for all of those years. That's where as a child I used to play in the sand, and this is where I started catching trout in little pools that would dry up because San Juan Creek will dry up in a normal summertime, it will go dry, except for spotted pools here and there. I used to catch the trout in the, in the little pools and put them in the bigger pools so they would survive, and I learned how to catch fish with my hands. and. Uh, that's what I did, and I can still catch fish with my hands. 
fishing wasn't all that Doc got up to at San Juan Creek. Just down the Ortega Highway from the cabin, towards San Clemente, was the San Juan Hot Springs Bath that Doc and his friends would sneak into. And when he was a little older, he came back with his college friends. And it was at San Juan Creek, in the cabin before it burnt down and was rebuilt, that he pinned Eleanor at the Sigma Chi Pledge Party. And it seems that Doc got in practice for the Huamas trip, judging by the diving mask he's wearing here at San Juan Creek. Doc explains spearfishing in Mexico. Called an arbalete, and basically it was a slingshot, the metallic tube about an inch in diameter, and affixed to the front of it, and a couple of prongs were a piece of rubber, like a piece of inner tube, except this was round cord, and you pull that back and cocked it back here. So, you know, what you did, you aim at your fish you wanted for dinner, and you let him have it, and then you had whatever it was that you shot. And Doc and his family have had many fish dinners over the years. Doc has always eaten the fish that he's caught, cooked to perfection by Eleanor. You get them a little moist, flop them upside down with some cornmeal, throw them in a fry pan, fry them, serve them with some tartar sauce. And that makes a happy man out of me. We have some barracuda at home, which I may have for dinner tonight, now that I think about it, that my uh, grandson caught here in uh, San Diego, oh, four, four days ago now. And uh, I will finish that off. It'll be the last of his barracuda that he caught. Doc has never taken the easy or the comfortable road. The Mexico trip in 1956 with homemade scuba gear is just one example. But as the following chapters will demonstrate, Doc continued to take on challenges and make a success of them. For Doc, now 82, it has indeed been a wild ride. <laughs>